YouTube. So here's this juicy content you've been looking for. You see it. Welcome, your Spark Driver account's been deactivated. You can go look at the notifications here. Well, my other notifications seem to have disappeared. I can go look at my other phone. But all it says is after reviewing, we decided to keep it. I reappealed, and next step's arbitration. And that's my last and final appeal. They do not want to spend the money on arbitration. We are entitled we are we have the right to it in our contract. We have the right to arbitration. So let's uh go on my other app here. I'm gonna show you. I think this one has a notification because this is the older version. No, it does not. So I didn't update the app on my other one yet. So what I had was um hours after I got deactivated. Like, I mean hours, like six, seven hours. Like, I finally got a notification that said missing delivery. And my last delivery, it was during a rainstorm. It was pouring. The person's phone wasn't hooked up. And they refused to answer the door. So what I did was take the photo. And um, a couple of times the store said, oh, you know, you can leave it at the door if you send them a picture or you send a picture in an app. Like, it's because the app can see the text messages. But that was the wrong thing to do. It was not the right thing to do, and I knew it wasn't. You put, um, I should have hit return to store. My uh, judgment literally got clouded because of the weather. And I was frustrated. I was wet. I was miserable, and I was frustrated. And it was someone who, when they would previously answer the door, gave me a lot of attitude about it. You do not have the door at leave it door option selected in the Spark app. There is no override. There's no leave it door option like Instacart or DoorDash. So what you have to do is hit the return to store option and you have to go return it to the store and they give you a little extra compensation. Sometimes it's one and a half times the pay of that single trip when you're on a double, which is usually around $5 or they give you at least three. I've had it be three most often, which really sucks to drive like, you know, most Spark orders are like five to ten miles, especially in my market. Most of my offers are eight to fifteen. So when you do that, it really hit, hinders you. I should have bit the bullet. I know how to work the market it was leading me back to, but I really want to go back to the military base, which I was closer to. That's my, you know, home ground. It was almost dinner. It was like 4.50 in the afternoon. So what I should have done was just bit the bullet, return the items, and I'd already waited over 20 minutes on these items. So what can we take from this, guys? What not to do? Do not ever leave a hand to me at the door. Always, always return to store, even if the store starts harassing you. I had people cancel on me on approach. They're like, why didn't you just leave it there anyway? I'm like, why would I do that? That means they didn't pay. In our contract, that's against that's a contract violation. That's just like giving someone something for free. You are to return it. It's against your terms of service. However, I feel I was unfairly deactivated because I did make attempts. I did show in app that I did do the right things. And when I called, they can't give me a reason. They can't even see a reason. They give you some BS about HIPAA, but like I talked to the lady and she was definitely from the U.S. She was from definitely from Arkansas. You can, you know, you know an Arkansas accent when you hear it. So she might have been with the Spark team with Home Office, and she said we can't even see it here. I'm like, oh boy. She's like, well, um, do you want to appeal? I'm like, well, I already spoke to another agent who put the appeals process through. So I called back after I got this notification. I'd already put the appeal through as soon as I found out I was deactivated. And then um, I waited like 18 days for a response. So October 10th was 18 days after. And it's supposed to be only 10 business days. It shows you how slow DDI is. And everything is delayed on Spark. I have had, yeah, as you can see, my market's busy. 
I'm not there right now. I'm home. But um, it, it's very busy there. So, like, <sighs> my market was great. Like, to this point, I was working on, my acceptance rate was just skyrocketing. And this day that I ran into the problems, it's like the first time I had the problems in three days. Like, I was taking stuff on the drops. And I was getting them done so quick. This is the fastest I've ever worked with Spark. Most orders would be out in two to ten minutes. Just an average restaurant wait time. Walmart wait times are usually 30 minutes plus. And this is the reason why you do Spark. You only take high paying orders. You take $20 plus period unless it's off time and you got nothing better to do. So like you take that $18 as a risk. You take it as a calculated risk and then you take that $5 going to the same area with it. So you subsidize your trip and you still made 20 and change for that hour. So what I'm saying is cover your bases. Always cover your bases. Not just on Spark, on any of these apps. If it says you have to return it to a merchant or you contact support and they say return it to the store, don't just not do it because it's an inconvenience. Just do it. Bite the bullet. Take the loss for the two hours of your time. It's better than getting deactivated and losing your source of income. Spark was on par with DoorDash. Now I'm so leaning on DoorDash that my acceptance rate is up to 60%. That's how much I'm doing DoorDash right now. I'm going hardcore at it. And I, I kind of adapted a new strategy where I'm still profitable. I just keep moving as much as I can, and as long as the order's profitable, that they stick in my face as soon as I drop, I accept it right away. So, like, I took a 950 double, for example, but that's another video. I explained that last night. Go watch it, guys. So, I got three bullet points I want to make. One, contact your customer. Always get a hold of them, even if they're frustrated that they open the door on a hand to me. On a spark. And on any other app that doesn't have a can't hand option, call support and let them know what's going on. And I'm telling you this. I've done it a couple times on Grubhub, for example, where it just didn't have the option where they wanted it left at door. And I just left it and left the text. Luckily, it was on the military base and I was chill. And like I repeatedly called this person on the way out and they finally answered. But the fine the thing is, is you never know if that unresponsive person is just going to say, well, I never got the order. What do you mean? I, no one ever got a hold of me. I didn't get no texts. I didn't get no calls. And then the people who don't put the correct information in. This is why we take high paying orders. But I know this person's a miserable human because it was a no tip paired with a good tipper. I know the first customer was the good tipper who tipped me like 10 bucks. And there are people I've waited on before. This person I also went to before and they did that. So one... Always hand it to the customer when it says a hand to me. If not, return to the store. Two, on these and other apps, if you have a situational problem, do contacting support is very aggravating and frustrating, but just do it. Three, when you return the store, you take that loss and you bite the bullet. Just explain to them that you do not want to endanger your contract. You do not want to endanger your jeopardy. When you get cancels, don't just... I don't care if you're in front of the house. That means drive away and go do it. Or if you already started dropping the packages, quickly grab them and go. Do not hesitate. Grab what you dropped and go back to the store. Do not hesitate on that. Do not let the customer start to grab them saying, I'm sorry, the app canceled notified me that I need to take this back to the store. And if they attempt to steal it anyway, then you call support. Cover your butt. Take a picture of them. Take a video of them grabbing the stuff. And that you could not stop them. Cover yourselves, guys. Always. Because, honestly, you can go and look at this. You can go and look at my past earning. Look, it still acts like I'm a freaking active member, even though it says I'm deactivated. It's still giving me the weeks. So that tells me there's some leeway in there. They still send me notifications once in a while. I get text messages. I get the text messages still saying, oh, here's this huge spark incentive this week. Look at this money I was making. That was my best week ever was in July. $980 on Spark. That's when I first started doing it hardcore. So, obviously there's weeks in there where I didn't work as much or Spark just wasn't as hot. 
But when it's hot, it's really hot. Look at that earnings, guys. That's on par with what I make on DoorDash. For the hours worked, it's about the same. So it's one of my most profitable apps, and the carpet got yanked out of under me. Be prepared. Have backups. This is why we multi-app, guys. We don't just lean on one app. We don't just do one app, period. Even if you do one app at a time, you take the best offer off each app, and you know how to work your other apps, and you always turn them on, see what the best offers are available. Even if you do one offer a month off that app. Brody, I can think of an example. I maybe get an order off it once every two months, if not three. But it'll either be something that helps subsidize my trip when I'm on the road and I'm going somewhere anyway. Or it will be a $50 banger. Something awesome, you know? Especially in the middle of the afternoon when you're not doing anything better. So keep that in mind, guys. Stuff like that. Always have backups to your backups to your backups to your backups. I mean, you can go look at my customer ratings, I believe, and that's my metrics. Look at that. I was trying to work on my on-time arrival. That's what I was trying to do. My acceptance rate was up to 48. It took a little bit of a beating just before they deactivated me. I added up to 65 just before that. 2% drop rate, 4.8 customer rating. These are based on 50 trips. For some reason, I don't know why my on-time arrival wasn't moving. All these other metrics were moving around. My drop rate was only up to 4% because I dropped one order. When you drop an order on Spark, it really hits you hard. I don't care that you say, oh, well, the drop rate don't work in my market. Ugh. I could care if I like willy-nilly, please. Elmer's on. But anyways, just look. You have to take it seriously. You have to take it as if it's going to hit your drop rate. You never know if you don't check your metrics. And all of a sudden your drop rate's a deactivation. Here comes next week. Oh, you're deactivated on Monday. Sorry. Not sorry. You got to keep on with this stuff. Let's go down to the red. This is what gets you deactivated. Your on-time arrival is less than 65%. Uh, a 0% acceptance rate, which is bullcrap, by the way. Drop rate of 20% of less than 20% or of greater than 20%, excuse me. And customer rating of less than 3.8. To get less than 3.8, you have to really be a frick up. Even on something like Walmart Spark, where customers lie, they cheat. It, it's a, These grocery apps, customers get upset over things that are out of our control. They're upset that the store is out of products. They're upset that the system generated a replacement they didn't like. It's not our fault. And this is why I do not like shopping pays on Spark, even though they pay great. Shopping pays on Spark might upset your customer and get you freaked up. They might, custom, some customers get so upset that they'll report their order missing because they didn't get the items they wanted. It's just what the system was giving us and it told us to replace it with. People like that because we don't have to interact with the customer, but that's not good customer service. Your customer might not want that item, but it's telling you to do it. It wants you to fulfill the order. These apps want you to fulfill the order. DoorDash just put that out. Hey, fulfill every single item, either original or substitution, and we'll give you an extra buck. They want to fulfill these orders because that's how they make money, guys. And really, you should be because if you're fulfilling orders, that's good customer service. But you have to have communication with your customer, even if you're wise enough to pick yourself. Oh, they don't have the name brand butter. They have the store brand, though. Grab the store brand. And you communicate that to your customer. I just grabbed the Prince Chopper brand instead of the Cabot, which is literally the same thing because Cabot makes most of the things up here for the companies. So be careful, guys. Never, ever get to here. Your drop rate's over 20%. Do you know how easy that is to get to? I got to 19 at one point because I was still trying to learn the app. I was sick of these very long wait times. I took a few orders I shouldn't have, and that was on me. Spark treats you like a Walmart associate. It treats you as if you're W-2. It is the most frustrating app I have worked, but I made it work, and look at the money I made. So they really dump and pump. Like Walmarts are notorious for high turnover rates. They'd have a metric up in our um, lounges. Like I think ours was always around 20%. So every, it's like 20, 25%. So every one out of five or one out of four new associates they hired would quit. That's what our turnover rate was. And 
I go to other stores, they had me help them for inventory. I walked at their turnover rate, it was like 60%. So that means every three of five people they hired or has currently had on staff would walk out the door. That is an incredibly high turnover rate. And they didn't even seem to be worried because they could just pull someone like me. They will use and abuse you. Do not let these apps use and abuse you. Cover yourself, make smart decisions, and be ready if the carpet is pulled, guys. I mean, look at me. 4.8 customer rating is a great customer rating. That means one lousy human being probably rated me a one or a two star. Because they were upset. Like I said, things that are out of our control. So that means all my other customers adored me of the ones that rate. So it's a rotating 50 customer rating. So maybe 51 or 52 customers have ever rated me over the 100 something trips I did on Spark. Or 255, sorry. But I will let you guys go. Please let this be a learning lesson. Use me as an example of protecting yourself and what not to do. Even if you think you're covering yourself, you're probably not. And a lot of I hear a lot of drivers. And some people in my core audience that I'm in voice chats with, oh, I just take a picture in the messages and let them know it's there. No, do not do that. Do not. Do not do that. Cover yourself. Hit on the apps that have a can't hand me button. You better be spamming it. Waiting for that time to run all the way down. And then taking your pictures. And on the other apps that make you return them to the store or support, you have to reach your support. Even if you don't want to, reach out to support and take it back to the store. Me personally, I just grab the stuff and start heading back toward the store before I even get through to support because I know that's what they're going to tell me to do. So I've done that on Instacart many times. I've done that on Grubhub a couple times. I did that with alcohol orders. And the person's non-responsive. I start calling when I'm within two minute range of them. I go in, you know, like an apartment building. They refuse to answer the door. I repeated to call them. And I've already started that timer. And then you, you have to do that dreaded call to support. And I started driving back to the store as I was online with support. They were like, oh, can you take it back to the store at this time? I'm like, yes, I'm heading back there now because I figured that's what you'd want me to do when the timer ran out. Yes, that's what we want you to do. So I had to go back and drop it at the 7-Eleven. Cover yourself. I don't care. And on these merchant-based orders with restaurants, there's a lot of them that want you to bring it back, which is silly because they're just going to throw it in the trash can. But still do it anyway because they just claim you stole the food. Because you had a miserable human being customer. So every freaking one that says, hand me leave it door, if the customer refuses to open the door, well, there's no freaking leave it door option on some of them. Oh, well, you have to take it back to the store. Let the customer be upset because they didn't pick the right option. Cover yourself first. Cover your CYA. Cover your A star star. Okay. Let this be a learning lesson, guys. Do not be bamboozled. Taking a two-hour loss is better than losing your whole livelihood. All right. If you guys have any comments or questions or suggestions for other drivers of situations you've been in, please leave them in the comments. Like, comment, share, subscribe. I'd like to see these kind of videos go viral. I think these are very important to educate our fellow gig Gig drivers out there. Take care, guys. Have a great one.